Hi, it's been a long time since I've put up a video. Uh, it's about time and busy. So I put up a ceramic studio, Redox Clay Studio. We teach eight classes uh, off of membership. It's in Northern California, Concord, California. Um, but it's due. I'm firing a kiln uh, right now. It's taking a little while. There's nobody in the studio, so I get a chance to. Um, film something and I also got some plates that I demoed a while back I'm gonna trim them so this video is about trimming a plate first I want to just briefly talk about plates a little bit like about the foot what type of foot are you gonna put in there this is a nice deep foot you can hang on to it for uh, glazing or you know like uh, just a nice foot elevates the plate um, and it's really easy when you glaze it to just clean off that this area and it's a nice uh, finished look. Um, I personally am not into flat bottom plates that that you know are raw gla clay underneath here. Um, I guess that's fine, but I, I, I like a finished look like that. I'm a little traditional. Um, I don't think it's a minimal look at all. Maybe it is. Uh, you can comment on that. I, I, I just wasn't raised that way. Um, so I, this one has a little bit different foot. It's a more low profile foot, but it's cleaned off. I think it's a nice finished look. Um, these plates don't have big rims to them, but uh, this is the plate that I'm going to trim. So it's pretty, this is a nice shallow curve in here. The other thing I want to talk about is when the plates crack. So many people always post things that, oh, my plates are cracking, what do I do, what's that from? And the first comment anyone will ever say is, did you compress the clay? When you're flattening a plate like this, you're compressing it. Um, it's usually from throwing with too much water, taking too much time to get it centered, uh, and so therefore you're wearing away all the fine particles, all the ball clay, and the, the smaller stuff that holds the bigger particles together. If you're throwing with porcelain, there still is, most porcelains still have some molochite in it, uh, which is a porcelain grog, uh, but they're just very, very fine. What it really comes down to is drying. Anybody knows when you get plates that crack, it's because you're drying them too fast. The other factor is if you have a, a varying thickness from, maybe you have a thin rim and then it gets super thick in here and you don't trim off enough, um, you'll get cracking if you have it too thin in here and you didn't plan for it you didn't and you didn't leave enough on there then if you have a thick area here and it's thin in the center of the plate <clears throat> when it's drying it's going to pull it'll pull it apart so it's all about drying um, you may have to wrap the rim leave this exposed um, it has to be with bats that you're throwing with um, I threw these on masonite bats um, and when they were almost leather hard and, and, and able to and I was able to touch them without you know leaving some sticky there wasn't any stickiness to it um, then I was able maybe I need to wire it again or this one I just pulled right off um, I wire it just right after I throw them um, and then just let them dry under plastic until they're ready I think if you're trying to speed dry them and you're in a hurry to get plates out and you're rushing it and then you're just gonna you're gonna crack plates you just gotta be patient with them you, you can't play the drying game with clay, uh, especially with plates. You know, if you try and, well, if I leave it uncovered for two days, it should be ready to, I don't know. Um, you live on the coast, it's gonna take longer. You live in the desert, it's gonna be quicker. It depends, the air conditioning's on, the heat's on. What's going on? I mean, it's really, so the best thing is if you keep it wrapped with plastic so you could monitor the drying. That's probably the key thing. So um, enough said about that. If you have any more questions or comments, post them in there, I'll respond back to them. If you disagree with them, uh, you know, and it's a good, valid reason, and you know, great. Um, I, I, I'm not always, I'm not right all the time. Uh, but in my experience, that's what I've found. And my experience is uh, firing thousands and thousands of pots for people at schools, you know, junior colleges, art centers, all the places I've ever worked. Here at, at my studio, um, we fired this 16 cubic foot kiln three times a week. Uh, the bis kiln is, is when it's, when it, the only time it's empty is when I'm moving between, moving the finished stuff off and then moving the greenware back in. I mean, it just, we just move a lot of stuff through here right now. Um, so let's get to the plate. 
what I got is, let's turn this around right there so you can see that, is I just like to bump it. So I put, I'll put a little bit of water on here in the rim, just to get the rim, just to moisten the rim a little bit. Get it close with those lines on the wheel head. Now I just use my thumb right here, and wherever it hits my thumb, push it a little bit away. You're only trimming this area in here, so that's all you should worry about. Don't worry about this rim because it may not be completely centered. Um, then people say, I just use a Griffin grip. Okay, that's cool. Use a Griffin grip. I don't own one. I, I probably could buy one, but I, I just for some reason don't use one. And the certain forms I make, I don't need a Griffin grip, but I'm not saying anything bad against a Griffin grip. I just think that if you, you could try and center it this way, um, then you can do whatever you want. If you can center it this way and get it centered by bumping, if it's a bowl or a cup, um, center it in this fashion. I don't, some people level the bottom with the level, though, or they'll go like this and they'll scratch the top of it. I don't really know what that means. I'm gonna level this bottom anyways. Some people put a pin tool in here. Once you make so many marks, I don't know which the original one is, so I'd rather just have my thumb right here and wherever it hits it, just push it in or, or tap it on, tap it into center or bump, center it. Okay, a couple tools. There's this tool, this tool. Um, there is I just ran off for a second. There's this tool. I don't use this one that often. This one, I, I want to use this one. I want to use these two. Uh, for some reason, I just don't practice with them enough. Um, we have them here at the studio. Uh, we sell these. Um, we sell these. Um, I don't sell these. These are, Dolan stuff's hard to come by. It's just long order time. Um, so, but I'm gonna use this one. This is a Dolan. I want to say it's like an M something. I can't remember the name. Anyways, it's like a small pair of trimming tool. So the first thing I do, and it's personal preference. Wh whatever trimming tool you want to use um, is fine. I don't think it matters. Uh, what I will do first is I will make sure this is on. Okay, it's stuck on. Is I will make a divot in the middle here. So I know I can go that far without trimming through the bottom. And my first goal is to level the bottom, level this whole thing. Even though it looks level, uh, I'm gonna take off just another layer. So if I go around, let it go, and, and it takes off clay, and then if I hold a certain depth, pretty soon it doesn't take any more clay off, and then I move. So I'm going out in concentric rings. So it takes off clay, so it's hitting the high spot, and then it's not taking more. So I'm just I'm leveling the bottom. It's not level, even though I threw it on a bat. I, I, I went through the wire, and it's probably it has a slight angle to it. It's always bumpy out here. So see how it's taking clay, and when it doesn't take clay anymore, I know I've leveled, and I'll move and lift up the trimming tool. Now, once you get better at doing it, you could just go. It just power into it and go all the way across. If you, but if in the beginning and you're not making enough plates, you, you don't have the confidence to do that. So go in the concentric rings. And then now I'll use the broad side of the trimming tool to, to take away those finer lines that I make. Uh, now I will uh, kind of scribe the outside where I want my foot to be, the outside of my foot and the inside of my foot. The diameter of the foot or the width of the foot is, gonna, is relating to the, the thickness of the rim. Um, if this is too fat and this is skinny, it, it just doesn't look balanced and vice versa. If this is too skinny and this is fat, it just looks weird. So get, get them close. Um, and these are just a, a starting point and you could make alterations in however you, you know, like, uh, you know, whatever visual aesthetics you have for a foot. I'm going to take away all this in here and this little part out here. I'm gonna start out here first. I'll just go out here and I'll take this. Same thing as I did when I was 
um, leveling the bottom is I'm going to go in with the tool and wherever it hits it, I'm going to hold. Once it takes off that depth and the priest suit doesn't take anything else off, then I can, I can move. The clay consistency right now is um, like, like cheddar cheese or some will call it leather hard. Um, plates you could go a little bit firmer I think. If you try and trim them too soft, you're just going to push this in. The biggest mistake I see people making is they trim too, too soft. You got to catch it when it's at the right stage. But if you're going to err on anything, maybe a little bit firmer than leather hard, you get away with it. After that, when it's bone dry or it's uh, between bone dry and, and a little bit past leather hard, um, and it starts to come off like in, 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 sh in powdery, you know, smaller chunks, just basically powders flying off it, that, that's too dry. Um, you're better off just making another one. People don't like that. Um, you just gotta watch after it, you just gotta look after it. Now I'll take away the inside of the foot here. And this one I'm gonna go across. Now I know I can go all the way to this line without that little divot I left in there without going through the bottom. And then I'll just smooth this stuff out, these smaller lines in here. You just kind of repeat it. I'm pretty much done out here. Now I'll just work on this. Now here's the other question that comes up. People always go, how far do I know to trim without going to the bottom? And there's so many things people do. People go, oh, just tap it. Well, what's the sound? People go, oh, it makes a thud sound. Well, what, what thud are we talking about? I think you're gonna get a different resonance of sound uh, with different clay bodies. Moisture content, if you're trimming a little bit wetter, drier, it's gonna sound different. So I don't know what that sound is. You know, some people can, and then some people stick a pin through it that's cut so it's uh, like, a, like a push pin and part of it's cut off so you get a certain depth. I mean, you can stick it through, but now you got a hole in your, your plate. And not every, Thing needs to be that same depth. It has to be a little thinner, a little. It just takes time. You have to. This more stuff you make, you get better at zeroing into it. You know, it's not an exact science. And even if I know the thickness of that, how, how do I know? And then I guess you could measure it and have little sticks to measure the depth so you can know how far to go. I mean, you could do that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. I'm lazy and I don't I don't know how to do that and I don't if I I knew how to do it I just don't want to do it. I think it's just easier to, to over time I could easily guess. Now for me what I do is I just push on it. Now this one gives a little bit so I can go a little bit further right in here and it definitely I can go more here. And since I know how I threw the the plate, this is a little thicker out here. I'm gonna take this section down to where it's level with this. So it looks like there's this continuous curve and the foot ring was just set on top of it. That's a classic, classic trimming um, look or method um, or a framework which to, to, to shoot for. Once you can do that and you're throwing things to, to be trimmed in that, that fashion, then you can make it any way you want. It doesn't matter. You know, but I think you definitely have to throw and trim within some kind of parameter or else um, it looks, it doesn't look right. It looks reckless. It looks unfinished. It looks unrefined. And I think those are things you just have to force yourself to do. Um, right now I see a lot of, a lot of people getting into ceramics and they want to take shortcuts. And I mean, I, I like to take shortcuts too, but there's certain things you just can't take shortcuts with. So what ends up happening, I think sometimes is form is lost. And I think the argument sometimes is people will, will consider themselves as, you know, a minimalist and they're minimally throwing and I guess that's fine. You know, I see some Japanese stuff that's very minimal, but um, some of these Japanese master potters, they've been doing it for decades, you know, longer than most of us have been alive. And so they, I think they have every right to do it in that, that fashion. I think some of this basic stuff get this basic stuff down and then you can do whatever you want and then you can have you give yourself license to to, 
to make those pieces. Um, then again, the argument now is, who cares? And what does it matter? You just make this object, get it the way you want it, and that's that. You know, so I guess that's that's fine too. But I think if you want to become a, a well-rounded potter, and you want to be versatile, and you want to make a variety of shapes, and um, if you see something, you can emulate it. Uh, I think your basic throwing and trimming just is something that has to be mastered, or, or at least. Um, have a direction in which to go. So I'll press on it again. It's still firm here. It's still I'm gonna take a little bit more here and then I'll be done. I know the video is running a little long, but I'm always worried about that. I know people get bored really fast. Or if you don't like something I say, they just t turn it off, and people get offended really easy, and then they have weird comments. This clay that I'm using is a clay that is locally made by a company um, called East Bay Clay. This is a clay called Meath, M-E-A-T-H, and it's named after the county in which um, the gentleman that owns East Bay Clay, Mike Haney, uh, that's where his grandmother's from in Ireland. So most of his clays are named after uh, places in Ireland where his family's from or named after um, relatives, like there's one, uh, clay that he has is named after his grandmother so good stuff so this stuff is locally made in small batches um, and it, it's just a really nice clay body it's a white stoneware it has some uh, grog in it 48 mesh grog uh, but it's still pretty smooth despite the 48 mesh size grog in it so now I'm pretty much done uh, the last thing I'll do is I'll just kind of round off these edges a little bit now I leveled the bottom for a couple reasons. One, I don't touch this foot ever again. What I see most people do is they, they just start trimming and then they realize that the foot's not level and they start work, working on the foot and then pretty soon the foot is lower than the middle. I see a lot of the middles and then people start to put like a, a inner ring so it doesn't sag. If you have your plate thrown with a nice curve in the middle, so you know, in the, if I was to turn this upside down it has a nice curve. Well, this one has a nice curve this this way when it's upside down. If you have that slight curve in it, you don't have to worry about this sagging in. And this is just a 10 inch, this this is probably 11 inches that'll end up being like 10 and a quarter um, dinner plate. Uh, so that's all you have to do. And it's not a it's not a big deal. So if you you have to just worry, throw more plates, you know, throw more plates. Uh, this was thrown with a little over four pounds of clay. Um, it's almost, I think almost throw this thing maybe 11 and 3 quarters or 12 to get it to be 10 and a half inches roughly. Should be around there. Um, there's a throwing weight guide that Lakeside Pottery puts out that's similar to the one Robin Hopper had. The late Robin Hopper. God, I shouldn't even say that because what if. Some of those weights that are on there. And what I'm doing now is I'm just burnishing the surface so that those throwing marks are gone. I got a little bit of red clay in here. I'm throwing with a red or a brown, dark brown clay. So there's other clay that's not available right now, so the alternative is this red brown clay. Um, and so I'm using this flexible metal rib just to smooth out all those trimming marks. Okay? So then. Now, it's the right consistency, maybe a little firm. I may need to put it on again, but that's pretty much done. Let me check the other side of it. And then we're done. And so it's still pretty wet, it's flexible, but it has this nice curve, so it's gonna hold its shape. I don't have to worry about it warping. Everybody always worries about warping. Once you start making more plates, the warping stuff will be alleviated. This has this nice gradual curve in here. And um, if I press in from the back side a little bit at all, I just kind of make sure that it's, you know, I'm holding my curve in there. It looks pretty good, okay? So trimming a plate. Any comments, subscribe, like. Um, if you have any requests for any other videos, <clears throat> I think if I have more requests, you guys put pressure on me, I'll make more videos. So, um, 
Thank you.